Okay, so before I start this video, I just want to let you know that I'm recording this at 2 a.m. Central Time on July 28th, and I'm scheduling it to go up at around 2 p.m. Central Time, July 28th, so I'm going to be talking about, um, especially, especially what I'm talking about with Marc-Andre Fleury here, because uh, there's a lot of speculation that he might retire now that he's not in Vegas anymore, because I believe that's what he said, that once he gets traded for, from Vegas, he's going to retire, so just want to let you know now before I actually upload the video, um in case like anything's dated by the time this video goes up and yeah let's start this video so basically um if you follow the blackhawks or hockey at all the blackhawks just got two like i would say studs for free like genuinely for free i know they're technically they're both capped up moves but it's not like so basically what they did they got mark andre Fleury for um they got him for they got him for pretty much free. They got him for Mikhail Mikhail Harkarainen. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm so I'm not good with pronouncing I'm pronouncing those uh Scandinavian names, but pretty much he was just uh Harkanainen Harkanainen was thrown in just as like trade filler. Um, he had I don't think he played a game for the Hawks. He's like a perennial like bottom line in the AHL kind of guy. So it was just pretty much like trade filler. So like you know because I think you know you're pretty much not allowed to just send a player over for free. And we got, I believe he won the Vezina Trophy last year, uh, which, if you don't follow hockey, best goalie in the league. Um, he won the Vezina Trophy last year. Uh, Marc-Andre Fleury did. And so, pretty much, like, let's talk about this trade first, and I'll talk about the Tyler Johnson trade later. Um, it's a win-win for the Blackhawks' scenario. So, first of all, they got him for free, right? Um, and the whole debate is, like I just mentioned at the beginning of the video with that disclaimer or whatever... Um, Mark Andre Fleury, he's either going to retire or request a trade, right? So either it's either like he's going to kind of force his way out of the Blackhawks, but the Blackhawks won't have to retain any salary or anything like that, or he'll stay on the Blackhawks. I mean, pretty obvious choices, but it's pretty much either retirement or playing for the Blackhawks. Um, and either way, it's a win win. So, one, um, if he plays for the Blackhawks, that's going to be great because um, the Blackhawks were rotating a really young core of um, goalies last year when Colin Delia, Kevin Lankinen, and uh, Malcolm Subban. It's going to be so good, especially for Kevin Lankinen because he was a rookie last year and he was already doing really good. It's going to be really good for Kevin Lankinen to have that learning, to have that development behind Marc-Andre Fleury, who's also still a stud in the, goal, in the net. Um, Vegas went to the... Vegas went to the Western Conference Finals. They got bounced by uh, the Canadians, but um, Mark Andre Fleury was a key piece of that team that made it to the finals and to the Western to the Conference Finals. And yes, I know he made that mistake in Game Seven, but I mean, having Mark Andre Fleury who makes that mistake is better than you know rotating around three extremely young goalies. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, and if he retires, that's just seven million cap, seven million dollars of cap space that goes towards the Blackhawks' free agency, and you know, maybe signing some more young talent. Because technically, we're still in a rebuild, even though these latest moves, like that Seth Jones move, and now these uh, Tyler Johnson flurry moves, are kind of making it seem like Stan Bowman is trying to compete now. All of a sudden, really weird stuff, but yeah. But yeah, like either way, it's a win-win scenario for the Hawks. Either we get a stud, not even a stud, like an amazing really good goalkeeper, goalie, goaltender, and Marc-Andre Fleury, uh, who plays well, you know, you know, just becomes like a good player to be, have in front of the net, and also develop our young goalies in Subban, uh, Lankin, and then Colin Deal, I believe he's still on the team, I haven't heard f about him in, since the end of the season, but yeah, okay, I just checked, he's still on, t on the team, and Subban, Lankin, and Colin Deal are all 26 and 27, so having Mark Andre Fleury, who's been in the league for a really long time now, played with the Penguins. I think he won Stanley Cups with the Penguins. No, I don't think that's right actually. But played with the Penguins, who have been a very good team since he got there, and then getting uh, drafted or expansion drafted by the Golden Knights and making it to the Stanley Cup Finals there, and then making it to the Conference Finals in like every other year I think, or every other year but one, which is really good, right? Um, yeah. That's what I think about the Marc Andre Fleury trade. Like I saw it when I was at work, and I was so surprised that that happened. That I was genuinely wondering, like, if Stan Bowman just messed up, considering you know how critical I was of him during that Seth Jones. You know, if you saw the Seth Jones video, my previous video, you'll know like how much I, how much I was critique, how 
how mad I was pretty much at Stan for that trade. But I mean, it just looks like uh, the Blackhawks with this move, and I'll talk about the Tyler Johnson move now, um, are trying to become like the Arizona Coyotes of old, like where every team would pretty much just trade like their old retired player, like um, the Hawks traded uh, Marion Hosa and a pick, and I think Kjalmerson to the Coyotes just for cap dump. Um, the Red Wings traded uh, Pavel Datsyuk after he went back to Russia to the Coyotes for cap dump, like all of that, right? I think the Blackhawks are trying to become that new team, but actually receiving players who can actually play. Then, yeah, so I guess this is as good a time as any to segue into this Tyler Johnson trade. Let me see if I can scroll down. See, you can see my amazing jersey swap there. Same with, um, you can see my jersey swap for Mark andre Fleury and the one for Tyler Johnson here. I seriously don't get what um, Stan Bowman or how he was able to pull this off. Stan Bowman sent Brent Seabrook, who, if you don't know, he's on a long-term injured reserve and he's not coming back for sure. He announced his retirement. He's not playing hockey again. He sent that contract to um, the Lightning in exchange for Tyler Johnson and a second-round pick in 2023, I believe. And... Earlier, I just said, you know, I don't get why the Lightning did this trade or how Stan pulled this off. It makes sense. By trading um, Seabrook's contract away or trading that LTIR space too, meaning that the the Lightning just got like $7 million, I think. Let's look up Seabrook's uh, cap hit. Yeah, as you can see here, um, the Lightning pretty much just gave themselves $7 million in cap space um, in exchange for Tyler Johnson in the second round pick. Which is amazing because the Lightning have been st have been like struggling with cap space all season, like for a while now in their last two cup runs, like doing some like weird LTIR manipulation to get over the cap space or to circumvent cap space. Which I know the Hawks did in 2015 as well, but shh. But yeah, like it makes sense why they traded him to the Hawks, and honestly, with this trade too, like I'm really I'm happy for it because you know Brent Seabrook retired, so we just had that contract dead weight. And now we're getting like a solid offensive piece. Yes, he can't really stay healthy, but honestly, it's just good to have like another offensive weapon besides Kane, Taves, Debrinket, and you know, help also help just develop uh, Kirby Doc as well. Because again, like I said in yesterday's video, this I'm pretty sure this can be his first full season because you know, his first season got shortened because of the pandemic, and then his second season, which is this season, he had that injury from the World Cup of Hockey or some hockey, you know, one of those, like, international young people, young player hockey tournaments, but yeah, like, I don't really know what else to say for this, just, like, seems like Stan is turning the Hawks into the old Arizona Coyotes, pretty much, um, except he's actually getting players who can help develop the team, and players who are still playing to this day, and it looks like, I put this here as, like, a kind of tongue-in-cheek comment, oh, let me, the, like, just this what rebuild thing on the it's going to be on the thumbnail too, but on this like Microsoft Paint masterpiece that I made. Because um, it honestly looks like Stan is trying to signal uh, move away from the rebuild now. I think these moves like this, um, Tyler Johnson, Marc-Andre Fleury, and Seth Jones trade a couple days ago. I think those are all to like, it feels like he wants to give Kane, John, uh, Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taze, like very com like a team that they actually want to play on in their last few years here because I think both they both have like the same exact contract and they're just, they're both expiring 2023 2024 season I believe. So it just seems like you know before we finally commit to a full rebuild because let's be honest, you cannot you cannot rebuild a team when you have two of the league's two of the best players in NHL history on the team right. It just doesn't work like that. It makes sense, like, you know, look at what the Bulls are doing. You, what, they have, like, a, a, a solid, older, veteran players like uh, Thad Young and Garrett Temple, right? But they're not, you know, they're not some of the best players in league history. It's not like we have LeBron James on the team and we're saying we're still rebuilding. That's, like, it's not like the Bulls are saying that. The Hawks are literally have Patrick Kane, like, this is, you know, my biased homer take, but Patrick Kane is the best American-born player in the, in the history of the league. You cannot have Patrick Kane, who's still performing, by the way, even though he's like getting a bit older now. You cannot have someone like Patrick Kane say you're rebuilding. 
I think what Stan wants to do is just get all the young guys uh, playoff experience. You know, like we still have, um, you know, like Debrinket, Kirby Doc, um, all the goalies, um, all the defensemen like Dahan. Um, those are all the players on the top of my mind. He wants to get them playoff experience now in these last few years of Kane and Taves. And then, then you know, they'll have the experience to like kind of lead the other younger players that come in and like the actual rebuild after Kane and after Kane and Taves or if one of them stays or whatever you know what I'm trying to say like it just seems like I think that's what Stan is trying to do and honestly it's a smart move as much as I dumped on Stan last video for that whole Seth Jones contract Seth Jones trade and everything seeing these trades kind of make it make more sense that he's like you know he's kind of moving away from the rebuild for now like you can definitely tell the rebuild is still on the back burner because he's signing players who are kind of old and like don't have too big of a cap hit like I think um Tyler Johnson's cap is only cap it is only like five million dollars um Mark Andre Fleury's is five no sorry Tyler Johnson's five million dollars Mark Andre Fleury's is seven million dollars yeah so it's like it's pretty much just like preparing for the inevitable but you know after seeing like what Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane could do together and it pretty much just dem pretty much just them in sweeping the Oilers and then playing around in the, the bubble in Edmonton in 2020. I think he knows like we're def the Hawks are definitely not cup contenders, but they can make like they can make it to the playoffs for sure and maybe like advance a round or two, right? Maybe not two rounds because that's going to take you to the final. I'm rambling now, but I think that's what the plan is for Stan now. Like for this for Stan and that that's what look that's what the direction of the Blackhawks organization looks like. Just acquire all these like kind of big players with kind of big cap hits, which other teams don't want anymore, like Mark Andre Fleury, like Tyler Johnson. And just use them to help develop the younger players who are gonna be, you know, who are gonna be entering their prime once the franchise cornerstones in Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves leave. Um either in free agency retirement. I doubt they're going to retire after their contracts expire, but you get the point. Pretty interesting to talk about. Uh, I was completely blown away by these trades, especially, you know, I wasn't expecting the Tyler Johnson trade at all because it wasn't broken by any sources before. Literally the first time I heard of it was when the Blackhawks tweeted this. Yeah, you can see this. They tweeted at 9.06 p.m. These eye emojis, which have meant like this whole offseason that they're making a trade or they're signing someone. So you can see my uh, my reply down there. Like I had absolutely no clue what is going on, um, but I'm not mad at the trade. I'm not even gonna lie. Like definitely wasn't expecting it for sure. Like I'm gonna be on like hundred percent. I don't think anyone is expecting this, right? But makes sense. Um, Blackhawks future for the next two or three years when Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taze are still under contract looks bright. I guess. Just because it looks like Stan is trying to build for, like, just to have them compete in, like, you know, lower, lower like, maybe middle seed playoff spots. You know, again, makes complete sense. Like, I, I completely understand what he's trying to do here. I actually love this idea. Because, again, like, I'm saying this again and again, but the point has to be hammered in. You cannot rebuild. You cannot intentionally tank when you have two of the best players in league history on your team just doesn't work like that Stan realized that I guess you know like last season was magical kind of because all the rookies stepped up but I mean he knows you know you can't have that fluked kind of thing at all the time plus Jonathan Taves is coming back next year it looks like Stan just wants to give them like a few last you know great years before they leave for good and then finally he'll actually start the rebuild and help develop the team and yeah that's about it Thought it was kind of fun to talk with these trades because they came out of nowhere again, like I said. But hope you enjoy the video. Uh, sorry I haven't been recording as much. I just have so much stuff to do. And plus, you know, off season is just starting. So there's nothing really to talk about. Um, Yeah. Zach Levine's the third best player on Team USA. I'll see you.